Hi, Dr. J here with another video about R. Today we're going to talk about how to read your data into R if it's stored in a CSV or comma separated value format. I'm going to show you in a little bit what that format looks like, uh, but for now, if you know what that is, great. If not, let's worry about it in a second. Now, reading and writing CSV files is the most common way that I read and write data into R. There are certainly other ways. In a future video, I will talk about how to do it in Excel. Uh, but for today, we're going to stick with this very common file format called a CSV or comma separated value file. Now, to get started, um, if you have your own CSV file, that's great. And you can sort of modify the script here to read that file in. Uh, if you don't, and really that's what I'm assuming, if you don't have a file sitting there that you're ready to open, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out a file, write out some data really into a CSV file. And so here's the first step. The function in R, the base R function that does this is called write.csv, that dot being the period. Uh, we've looked at this tooth growth data set before. Uh, here it is in case you want to be reminded. There's three columns. We have uh, it relates the tooth growth in some guinea pigs due to the amount of vitamin C and the type of supplement that vitamin C was given to them from. And so uh, we're just gonna write this data set out uh, as a CSV file. The CSV file is gonna be called toothgrowth.csv. And so we can see here in my files, we now have a file called toothgrowth.csv. And if I click on it, I can say view file. And now this is what a CSV file will look like. In particular, you will notice a lot of commas, right? So there's commas here, and those commas separate the different columns in your comma separated value file. And that's why this is called a CSV or comma separated value files because we have commas separating those columns. Uh, it's a pretty succinct way to um, record your data. It's not the most readable way that we could do it. But nonetheless, at this point, we have a CSV file, and so now we just want to read it. Well, the base R way to read a file is read.csv, and we are going to save it into this R object that we're gonna call D, which is to my typical default for a data frame. And so if we just run that line, uh, we've in fact now, um, I guess I need to change this environment, but we can see up here that D uh, changed, uh, D was added to the environment, right? So this up here is a 60 observation data set, that's 60 rows and four variables, wait a second. Over here, it was length, sup, and dose, three columns, but now there's a thing we have four variables or four columns, so what's going on? Well, let's investigate that pretty quickly here. Number one, they're not quite the same thing. What we uh, started with, tooth growth, and what we wrote out and read back in, and one of the reasons here is that um, we have an extra column in this D data frame that we've read back in. Uh, this column just has the uh, title X. And so, you know, what, what really is that? Uh, well, if we take a look at what the structure is of our data frame D, you'll see that X is an integer and it just looks like it has values one, two, three, four, five, six, just integers. We can even print out the data frame. And we'll see here that somehow it looks like our row names are duplicated. So this X variable is really just the same as our row name. So one all the way through 60. Now, I, I don't think this is a appealing behavior, uh, and I'm not sure why the default in R uh, includes those row names when you write the file out. Actually, I guess I should have pointed that out here too. Right, you can see that that file name is part of the file. And um, yeah, again, I'm not really sure why, okay? You also notice here that the column name isn't anything. And so that X was just something that when you read the file back in, that R just automatically added. So generally when I'm writing CSV files out, uh, I will always change this argument row.names to false. And that will ensure that in fact, the, um, the, that first row names are not written out. And so now we can see in our file, we don't have that extra column. Now when we read it in, we have exactly the same names in our read in data frame versus our read out, written out data frame. Um, right, and now they're very similar. You'll notice here that in our original data frame, tooth growth, 
that we had a factor. So this sup column was a factor. It had two levels, OJ and VC. But now in the data frame that we read in, it's a character vector rather than a factor, right? And it has the values VC and eventually OJ. Um, but if we want the two data frames to sort of be equal, then what we need to do is change the sub column to be a factor. Now I talked about factors in the previous video and so you might wanna check that out if you're not familiar with factor. Right now, all we have to do is change it to factor by using this factor or as dot factor function. Either way will work just fine. And once we do so, now our data frame that we read in is exactly the same as the data frame that we started with. Okay, so we read it in, changed sup to a factor, and we're good to go. All right, now I wanna start talking about uh, sort of more advanced uh, reading in of files. And so I'm gonna get rid of this toothgrowth.csv file, and the way to do that is using this unlink function. And now if you notice down below, right, the file toothgrowth.csv disappeared. All right, and so what I'm gonna imagine now, which is a much more common scenario, is that either you've downloaded a data set from the internet or you um, have a file somewhere on your computer, okay? And so I'm sort of going to pretend that I downloaded this file. On my Mac here, uh, the, every download goes to the downloads folder. And so I'm going to save this toothgrowth.csv into that downloads folder. Uh, and so I've done that. Now, if you're on a Windows machine and you're trying to follow along in this script, which by the way, there's a link down below, since I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, if you are trying to run all the commands in the script, you'll definitely need to change this because this is not how home directories are uh, designated in Windows machines. Uh, maybe if somebody wants to comment down below, how do you modify the script? It'll be something like C colon slash, it's probably slash is going the other direction. Uh, maybe like users. I don't remember how it is, so anyway, we'll just go with this. Um, now, the pro the thing is, if you try to do what we did before, where you just try to read the file in, right? The file is here, it's in our downloads folder. Um, I guess I could show the downloads folder. Um, you know, one thing I was gonna show you all earlier that I forgot about is all the CSV files are just kind of sitting in my downloads folder, so certainly I do this quite often. Um, okay, fine, toothgrowth.csv, where you are? There you are. Okay, so here's our toothgrowth.csv file in the downloads folder. Um, if I try to just read the file in, I'll get an error. And so, you know, the first time you do this, you'll be thinking to yourself, what gives, right? The file's there, I'm just trying to read it in. And the key thing is that um, R is not, not omniscient, right? It doesn't know where that file is that you're trying to read in. And so there's gonna be a, an idea in a moment called a working directory. And so R is looking for this toothgrowth.csv in your working directory, which happens to not be your downloads folder, which is probably a good thing. Uh, and so we have a few ways that we can get around this. The first and simplest way, but not really the way that I'm going to recommend, okay? But the simplest way is to use what's called an absolute path. And this just tells R exactly where on your computer this file is. Okay, since the file was written to the downloads folder, if I put in the entire path to that downloads folder, then I will be able to read the file in. So no error, there's the data set, right? Life is great. Okay, so let's get rid of that uh, object. You know what, let's go over here to connections so I have a better screen to work with. Um, so the, the key is this idea of a working directory. Now. Uh, in R, the way that you can get your working directory is this command get wd. You'll also notice that, in fact, at the top of the terminal window, uh, so right here, so where we have console, terminal, jobs, right here, it actually tells us right there our working directory. So it's very convenient. If you're working in, you know, uh, the R GUI or you're working in command line R or something, you won't have that. And so you can always use get wd to find what your working directory is. Uh, by the way, in case anybody's wondering, this tilde, right, is just really a, um, I don't know what the official word is, but sort of an alias to your user's whatever username you have, minus Jared. Okay, and so the, the first attempt to read the file, in fact, was trying to read it in that working directory. So it was trying to really read the file from this user's Jared get YouTube YouTube. Don't ask me why I have two folders, one within the other, both called YouTube. Uh, clearly, I need some file organization. 
Okay, but that's for another day. Um, all right, so we're trying to read this file from this directory, and that's where we get the error. Because in fact, you can see down below that that file doesn't exist in this directory. And so we have that issue. And so what we can do is that we can actually change our working directory. So in this case, we're going to use the setwd command, and we're going to change to the downloads folder. Right? And now that we've changed to the downloads folder, we can just use read.csv and read the file just like normal. So there it is, great. All right, let's change our working directory back to this YouTube YouTube folder, okay? Now what I'm gonna suggest is that you start thinking about where to store your data files. And my suggestion is that you think about having a project and within that project having a data directory. And so I'm gonna imagine right now for the purpose of this video that this YouTube YouTube folder is in fact uh, my project directory and I want to create a data directory underneath that YouTube YouTube folder and now you can do this wherever whatever folder you're currently in and we're going to remove everything at the end so you don't have to worry about anything and so we can use this dir.create function to create a data directory and you'll see down below now that there is this data folder which the data folder has nothing in it at the, at the moment okay but we're going to go ahead and write this toothgrowth.csv file into that data directory. And so here we go. And now if we go back into data, we can see there's the file. And now when you're reading the files back in, you wanna be thinking about a relative path. So the absolute path that we had before would work no matter what directory you were on on your computer. A relative path means that you have to be in the right starting folder, the right working directory to get to the file that you want to be in. Right now our working directory is this YouTube YouTube folder. We know that our data is stored in data folder. And so when we try to read the data in, we're going to append the file name with the directory that it's in. And if we do so, it's great. We can read the file in, it's exactly what we were expecting. Okay. So that's what I would suggest. And if you get into this habit, uh, and in a future video, I'll talk about projects up here in our studio um, that's going to really help your workflow to keep projects separated into different folders and within those project folders having a data directory that contains the data for that project. Okay, now I do, before I finish out this video, I want to mention another package that I will commonly use to uh, read uh, CSV files in. And it's called Readr, or Reader, not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, and it's actually found within the tidyverse. And we've talked about the tidyverse before, we've talked about ggplot2, uh, we've talked about dplyr, and so usually what I do is I just load up tidyverse, typically at the top of the script, but you know I didn't want it loaded yet. So we're gonna load up the tidyverse package, and now this reader package has functions write underscore csv and read underscore csv, as opposed to the write dot csv and read dot csv that we used before. And now if you use write underscore CSV, you don't need to do that row names false bit, right? Because by default, it in fact does the correct uh, row names. I mean, it does not include row names, let's say it that way. So here's the file just to verify. And now you can see it actually also looks a bit cleaner. The default was not to include all that those quotes that we saw in the write.csv file. So it's a bit cleaner file structure and that's certainly appreciated. Now, the, one of the real reasons that I end up using this uh, read underscore CSV a lot is that I often have, when I'm reading a file in, a dplyr chain that reads the file in and then does some manipulation. So I have a very short dplyr chain here where I read the file in, and then I mutate the sup variable by turning it into a factor. So we saw that earlier, but here's the way that I would typically do it all in one step in reading the file in. So there we go. Uh, when you use read CSV underscore CSV, right, you get a little bit more information than you would otherwise, and you can suppress that. But, and now if we look, oh yes, this D data frame that we just read in, it's not quite the same as tooth growth. And the reason is that when you use read underscore CSV, there's a few wrappers onto this uh, data frame, and you can see it's TBL and TBLDF. Uh, and that's a little bit different than the tooth growth that we started with, which was purely a data frame. But one of the things is that if you look at D now, um, 
the printing is a little bit more succinct. It doesn't print out the entire data frame. It tells you how many more rows there were. It tells you what types of columns you have and so forth. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of a nice feature of using read underscore CSV. If you convert it back to a data frame, then the two, the one that we read in and tooth growth original, they're exactly the same. Okay, so that's uh, it for this video. Next video, we're gonna talk about how to read Excel files. So if that's uh, your bag, come join us there. Uh, before you do finish everything, you should definitely go ahead and clean up uh, the files that we put onto your computer. And so if you unlink the directory with is true, it deletes that directory as well as the toothgrowth.csv file that we started with. Until next time, hope you have a great one.